Hello, my name is Nishat Noor. Uh, welcome to Millennium Headlines. This week's top headlines are... Cope up with technology, public demand. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina tells BTV. North Korea accuses U.S. of staging internet failure. A serious revolution sputters, a chaotic stalemate. Center for Disease Control's head says fight on Ebola will be long. In Limbo, a city in China faces life after graph. Now the details to this week's top headlines. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina last Saturday highly praised the role of Bangladesh television in flourishing Bengali culture and heritage across the world, asking the National Television Channel to cope up with technology and public demand. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina highly praised the role of Bangladesh television in flourishing Bengali culture and heritage across the world. कार्यक्रम विस्तारित North Korea lashed out at the United States last Saturday, blaming it for disruptions that cut off the nation's already limited connections to the Internet, while once again rejecting American accusations that it was behind the hacking of Sony Pictures. As was to be expected, North Korea has accused the United States of launching a cyber attack that shut down its internet earlier this week. In a strongly worded statement Saturday, Pyongyang also reiterated that it was not behind the cyber attack on Sony Pictures, which released the comedy film The Interview, which depicts the assassination of North Korean leader Kim Jong Un. It also demanded the U.S. provide evidence to back up its accusation. The North's powerful National Defense Commission called the movie illegal, dishonest, and reactionary, and referred to U.S. President Barack Obama as a monkey living in a tropical forest. Pyongyang went on to make vague threats against the U.S., saying the movie was part of Washington's hostile policy against North Korea. The White House has yet to respond to the North's comments. North Korea experienced a complete internet shutdown on Tuesday, and although connectivity was largely restored on the same day, some websites are still experiencing problems. U.S. officials say Washington played no part in the outages, but the FBI has accused North Korea of being responsible for the hacking attack on Sony in late November. The movie The Interview that made a last-minute push to U.S. cinema screens after the cyber attack made more than $1 million on the first day of its release. The comedy was shown in more than 330 mostly independent theaters after major movie chains refused to screen it due to security concerns. It was a victory that President Bashar al-Assad's opponents had dreamed of. Insurgents seized a key army base in northern Syria after more than a year of trying. But the mood in this Turkish border town flooded with Syrians who have fled both government bombings and extremist insurgents was more bitter than celebratory. It was a victory that President Bashar al-Assad's opponents had dreamed of. Insurgents seized a key army base in northern Syria after more than a year of trying. But the mood in this Turkish border town flooded with Syrians who have fled both government bombings and extremist insurgents was more bitter than celebratory. 
The assault was led by the Nusrat Front Al-Qaeda's arm in Syria, which claimed the spoils. By contrast, many of the first Syrians to rise up against Mr. Assad in 2011, civilian demonstrators and army defectors alike, followed the battle from the sidelines here. Unable to center Syria under threat of death from the extremists of Nusra and its rival group, the Islamic State. As Syria's war heads towards its fourth year, the complex battleground is increasingly divided between the government and the extremists, leaving many Syrians feeling that the revolution on which they gambled their lives and livelihoods have failed. Millennium TV, Naim Mohammed, New York. There are reasons for both hope and continued worry about the Ebola epidemic in West Africa. Dr. Thomas R. Frieden, director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, said on Monday. Undoubtedly, in terms of health, Ebola is the story of the year. And it has been quite a year uh, struggling with the world's first outbreak, uh, the f world's first epidemic of Ebola. We've had outbreaks before, but we've never had an epidemic before, spreading widely through multiple countries, deeply into communities for many, many months, now actually more than a year of spread of Ebola in Guinea. So the challenges are enormous, and I, I really feel privileged to be able to represent and tell the story of the CDC staff, the CDC professionals, who are so terrific at what they do in finding and stopping health threats and preventing them from spreading whenever possible. Really what's happening now in Ebola in West Africa is that we are transitioning from the very difficult work of breaking the cycle of exponential growth, and that cycle has been broken in Liberia, and we're working all out 24-7 with all of our resources to break it now in Sierra Leone. We've broken it already in Liberia, and Sierra Leone is the challenge. The next challenge, and quite frankly, the harder challenge, is getting to zero, identifying every case, tracing every chain of transmission, going into every community in each of these three countries to make sure that people with fever are appropriately evaluated and if they might have Ebola, tested. And if they have Ebola, quickly isolated, cared for, their contacts identified and every one of those contacts traced. We have not seen it go through 20 generations of spread. We like to stop an outbreak in two, three, at most five generations of spread. Here we are a year later still having cases. And the challenges are very different in each of the three countries and in places within the three countries. We can stop Ebola, but whether or not we do so will depend on how quickly, how meticulously, and how widespread our response is. But I'm very encouraged by the kind of commitment we, we have from each of the countries and from the global community as well. It's not just the U.S. coming in. Lots of global partners are coming in as well. The World Health Organization on Monday reported 19,340 Ebola cases, including 7,518 deaths in West Africa. Sierra Leone had the most cases, 8,939. Liberia has 7,830. And Guinea had 2,571. For 10 long years, this mountainous corner of central China was synonymous with the nation's energy-hungry economic takeoff. Its rich deposits of coal fueled the most frenetic era of the Chinese boom, turning owners of small mines into millionaires and dirty towns into gleaming cities. For 10 long years, this mountainous corner of central China was synonymous with the nation's energy-hungry economic takeoff. Its rich deposits of coal fueled the most frenetic era of the Chinese boom, turning owners of small mines into millionaires and dirty towns into gleaming cities. Now, Louis Leung is at the center of one of the most sweeping political and economic purges in the recent Chinese story, as President Xi Jinping campaign against corruption enter its second year. The Communist Party authorities have made an example of this district of 3.7 million, taking down much of its political and business elite in a 
flurry of headline grabbing arrests. Seven of the 13 party bosses who run Shaanxi province where Luliang is located have been stripped of power or thrown in jail and party propaganda outlets have cracked down in the region as proof that Mr. Z is serious about rooting out corruption. Millennium TV, Naim Mohammed, New York. Thank you for watching Millennium Headlines. See you next week.